Frogger, Battletoads, Glass, Waxy, Mr. Toad, Poisonous Trees, Grung, Frog Folk, Cane Toad, Tomatoes, Squeaking Desert Rain. Let's talk about Gripplies. The Gripply or the Magogolol, Magogol, Magogol, Mogogolo. <laughs> Nope, Mogoglo, Goal, Mogogol, or their variant, the Grung, Grung, it's like grunge, but 20 years out of date, it's fine, are a frog-based race for the Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dead. Dungeons and Daggers? Well, that's, that could be an interesting game. Oh boy, this is going to be a long video. Frog people, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons. That's it. Uh, these small creatures usually stand anywhere between two and four feet tall. And while they do look more frog than humans, they do stand on their back feet and have access to all the usual humanoid accoutrement that they can get. Weapons, clothes, hover bikes. They are quite agile as well as highly mobile for creatures of their small stature. They are small creatures, so they only get 25 feet of movement, but they do also gain a natural swim speed and a natural climb speed, depending on which version you're using. As a DM, I usually give them both. They get bonuses to dexterity as well as wisdom, and they get negatives to strength, which makes them sound pretty similar to some other small type creatures. They do, at the end of the day, basically end up being kobolds. Slimy amphibious kobolds. Kobolds. Kobolds? Kobold. Kobolds. Co- Bolds. As they are both small, dim-witted creatures, uh, the cobalts tend to be a little more violent and, uh, what is a word for gone, done, got squished real good? Go smooshes? The cobalts go smooshes. Where's the gripply and the mo- That is a different video entirely. Side note. Griplies would work pretty well if you wanted to make a murloc. Hold that for later. They tend to retain a little bit more of their hardy nature, and where the kobolds are very squishy and weak in the constitutional sense, the Gripply are more weak in the sturry muscles, spindly little arms sense. So you're probably not going to have any buff frogs here. That being said, if you really wanted to get out there and make a battle toad or a buff frog, you could totally do it. They're kind of specced in every way good for a monk or a rogue and or a barbarian. Ooh, the possibilities. What they lack in muscle mass and size, they do make up for in dexterity and mobility. Both races get bonuses to dexterity and have a wide variety of character traits to choose from. They have passive climbing speeds, optional swim speeds. They're super good at jumping, which makes sense for them being frogs and toads. So if you're looking for a way to make that sweet flip wizard that you've been hearing about in the Adventure Zone, there are variants, and I think they would do Taco proud. As for being one of the few optional small races for 5th edition, I think these little sticky-footed monsters are a great option for pretty much any ranged character, from rogues to rangers to druids. Having free range of your environment on a character that needs to be able to move freely is a huge advantage. And for characters that need to get in and out of battle, their size and mobility easily Easily make up for their weak frame because character size no longer affects the weapon size and for damage in fifth edition you can go as a barbarian with full constitution score running around the battlefield doing backflips and flying up walls like a monk that just watched the matrix for the first time all while wielding a battle axe. You just gotta throw some sweet tattoos on that frog and you've got yourself a Netflix special right there. Back on the murloc kick uh, you could basically just equate them to being small reptiles or amphibians, depending on what you're doing, and then just run as a murloc. They get bonuses to nets, which I don't see nets being very useful. So as a DM, I would allow you to swap that out for one martial weapon, which would maybe be a trident or a spear, maybe a fishing spear, bonuses to fishing. I don't know. Give it a thought. Alternatively, you could go all wind in the willows, choosing to be a cavalier or an artificer, and just go to town finding weird things to ride into battle. Uh, your small light frame. They are very light. We're talking like types of bags of holding light. Seriously, it weighs less than a backpack. Everybody has one of those. You can carry a Gripply. This would basically let you ride any medium or large creature or party member with ease. Uh, all the while, you can be throwing your potions or shooting people with your guns or crossbows. There's not a lot people can do about it. Stat-wise, you get some pretty cool... Did I mention that they get poison? Because we should really talk about the poison. Quick stat overview. Dexterity. Great. Bonus to wisdom. Great. M negatives to strength. Meh. That's fine. Uh, small creature. Super cool. Really, like, I don't get to talk about small creatures very much. Kobolds can be small or medium. Goblins can be small or medium, depending on what you're playing. I really think they should always, always be small. They should all always be small. There we go. And that can lead to a lot of really fun things. And the Gripplies especially, because while they are tiny for a humanoid, they're also just kind of big for a frog. And I think that's the, the kind of interesting thing is I think a lot of people would see your character as a frog. They do generally start with stealth bonuses because of their size, as well as their racial stealth bonuses when you're in marshlands. But I don't think that's as interesting as things like the toxic skin or the poisonous skin, depending on which edition you're looking into. I think that's something that really makes this class unique. So basically with toxic skin for the pathfinder at least once per day as a swift action griplies can create a poison that can be applied to the weapon and delivered as a touch attack 
Uh, alternatively, they can smear poison on their own body, effectively causing the first creature to hit them with an unarmed strike or natural weapon to take the poison effect. I think this is really cool, and I think this is the unique thing that makes Gripply really fun, but I don't like that it is a once per day thing and that you have to apply it to your body. I don't know what that means. Are they like pooing in their hands like a monkey, or are they just like licking their hands? Oh, that was a bad transition. Licking their hands with poisonous spit. I think this is one of their stronger traits, and if you're building a Gripply that isn't planning on running around in the swamps, I think this is a really good trade-off for their swamp walking ability, which basically just lets them stride through swamps because they're frogs, which that makes sense anyway. So why would that be an alternate trait? There's a lot you can do with poison for several different classes, and I think there can be a lot of flexibility with it. You can take this a few different ways. Talk to your DM about what type of poison you want to use. The general type for Pathfinders are the dexterity damage, and I'm not a big fan of those. I think 5th edition does a much better job by giving an affected creature the poison condition and taking disadvantage. You could definitely customize your own toxins, something like an anaphylaxis, which would cause their tongue to swell giving them silence or blindness or maybe you can make them go colorado style and just have their enemies trip balls whenever you get some of their poison in their mouth that is not a roll that i want to have to make i want to roll if i can <laughs> this is such a dumb joke i want to roll to see if i can get it in my mouth nope that's not right i'd like to roll to see if it gets in their mouth nailed it my point being that this is something that i think should be the main focus of their kit the grung it's like bung the bung frogs <laughs> The Gung Frogs. Gungs. The Gung. Gung? Not Gungans. Nobody needs more of that. The Gung is another variant from the D&D homebrew. I think they did it just about right, which just gives them the poison skin, calling for a constitution save for anyone that touches them, so it is on permanently. And any skin-to-skin contact with them? Gross. Either way, it's kind of a bonus slash limitation thing that I think would be a fun double-edged sword for the character. That poison skin is just always on. And so that's something they have to watch and think about. You base the constitution save off of your level so that it works quite well with D&D or Pathfinder, which could just be like eight plus your level. And there you go. Now, anybody that touches you or gets your skin secretions in their mouths or in their eyes has to make that constitution save. I think that's a really fun way to do it. There are a lot of other ways. I would suggest even through Pathfinder to remove that once per day restriction and just have it be permanent. For Pathfinder's intent, I think they wanted you to be able to apply it to your weapons. And I think you can still do that even in D&D. I would just say you'd have to take a full round to do it or one turn to safely apply it to your weapon or a standard action chance of hurting yourself because you are rubbing a weapon on your exposed skin. Not something you should do with haste or really ever. Yeah, don't do that. Maybe if you're a frog. If you're a frog, I do what you want. For other options, you can always gain uh, like an extendable tongue. I'll let you use your imagination for what you can do with that. And aside from that, there are a bunch of options for increasing your jump, increasing your defense because you're small, increasing your ability to ride or be a more expertise with poisons. The Gripply are not very complex as a race because they are just like, eh, I want to play a frog. Sweet, do that. Alternatively, you could just take the stats from the familiar page and be a frog. Also a choice. Aside from that, I really like using them uh, as gunslingers because I think they're one of the best gunslingers in the game. Uh, they're really hard to hit anyways because they're so small and guns and crossbows don't require strength. So you can really dump all those points into dexterity and wisdom and then they are just mwah. Perfect. Plus, it's really funny to see a tiny frog running around with a shotgun. I just like it. Not to mention your ability to be sneaky and climb pretty much any surface keeps you out of harm's way from day one. Always an issue with carrying capacity and ammo, but I'm sure you, with all of the large sized party members around you, you can kind of rent out a pocket space for your ammo and additional guns. Then again, you could just rent out a backpack and then just either... You know, put your apartment in there, and then when you feel like fighting, just pop out behind the wheel your own walking death platform. If things get a little too hairy, you can always use your fancy dancy, fancy dancy, fancy schmancy. What word am I looking for? Fancy schmancy, fancy schmancy ejection seat. Just your legs, because you're real good at jumping. Springy frogs. <laughs> I mean, I have a script. How do I constantly go this far off the rails? Thanks again for watching today. If you have ever played a Gripply or a Magoggle, Magloggle, Nognogblower, Mag, Mag, D and D Frog, or a Grung, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear your story about it. I have only ever played Gripplies as gunslingers, and I've played a few, and it's always a good time. So if you've done that, or you have a really cool gunslinger story, let me know down in the comments below. Our Discord server is up and running, and we have a whole bunch of fun conversations on there. You can always check out the art from these videos on ArtStation or Patreon, or if you want to get access to printable versions of these, or you want to use these for your character sheets. I would love to see your character sheets once you're done with them. You can get full access to those on the Patreon. As always, patrons get access to the transparent PNGs as well as some custom tokens I've made from all of my drawings to use in either your real world games or on D20 or is it D20 or Roll20. If we're on Roll20. If you feel like joining the Discord server, we'd love to hear you. would love to hear about your character. Uh, we have uh, quite a good time there. So also, if you're just an artist that you want to join the server and show us what you got there, that would be great. We'd love to see it. Uh, remember to keep your dice on the table and if you bite it and you die, it's it's poisonous. And if it bites you and you die, it's venomous.
And if you bite each other and nobody dies, that's kinky. It's just science. Thank you, Dude Man Bro Pants.